you ever encounter people on certain forums, message boards, or conversation threads online that are unabashedly pro-US? Now I'm sure you're thinking, yes, of course, why would that be strange? There are a lot of people out there supportive of the US government engaging in conversations in the social media world. But I don't mean those people. I mean the online personas that, oddly enough, are unrelenting in their patriotic vitriol and troll for literally hours trying to debunk legitimate questions or any opposition to the establishment. Sometimes it almost seems like these people might even be getting paid to do it. I mean, how else could they expel that insane amount of time and energy on these comment threads trying to argue how wrong you are? Well, this might be old news to some, but last year it was confirmed that the U.S. military has been manipulating social media by using fake identities to influence conversations and spread pro-American propaganda. It's called Online Persona Management Services. And under the CENTCOM contract, it allows the creation of up to 10 sock puppet accounts for every U.S. serviceman or woman working on the program. The stipulations are that every fake persona must have a convincing background, history, and supporting friend networks so that it will remain undetectable from even the most sophisticated adversaries. According to The Guardian, the project has been likened by web experts to China's attempts to control and restrict free speech on the Internet. And that critics are saying that it allows the U.S. military to create a false consensus in online conversations, crowd out unwelcome opinions, and smother commentaries or reports that do not correspond with its own objectives. Now, of course, according to CENTCOM, their only objective is to counter violent extremists and enemy propaganda outside of the U.S. And that it would be unlawful to address U.S. audiences with the technology. Wow, unlawful, really? Interesting because the newest version of the 2013 NDAA included an interesting amendment. This amendment legalized domestic propaganda on the American public. You heard me right. The newest NDAA wasn't just reauthorizing the indefinite detention of American citizens. It also allowed the U.S. government to legally carry out misinformation campaigns against the citizens of this country. But is this really surprising to anyone? I mean, the corporate media is basically a propaganda arm of the U.S. government anyways, isn't it? Why the need to legalize the use of propaganda when you already have an entire mainstream media establishment lacking to the White House, reprinting government press releases without question, selling wars, and carrying water for the administration? In fact, aside from everything I just mentioned, the Pentagon already spends $4 billion a year to influence public opinion, and the Department of Defense also spends hundreds of millions of dollars on information campaigns in countless countries occupied by the U.S. military. But perhaps even more disturbing than all of this is the fact that the CIA has already been infiltrating the biggest press institutions since the early 1950s. One has to look no further than Operation Mockingbird, a secret CIA campaign to spread disinformation and false stories to foreign governments during the Cold War. It did this by manipulating the media into focusing on propaganda, sabotage, and subversion. It was related, later revealed in congressional hearings that the CIA program consisted of literally paying off editors and reporters at most mainstream news outlets. The New York Times, CBS, Time, The Washington Post, Newsweek, AP, Reuters, and countless more. In one instance, a journalist named Joseph Alsop, who is alleged to have been one of the most prominent journalists working under Operation Mockingbird, wrote foreign affairs articles that appeared in over 300 publications. So, isn't it nice to know that the supposed watchdogs of the government can be so easily bought? Even though the intent of this program was to focus on matters outside of this country, it undoubtedly influenced everyone living here at the time. People to this day could still be reading and referencing these articles not knowing that they're completely fake. And <laughs> sure, this is more than 50 years ago, but let's face the facts here, our media is much worse now and has been much more easily compromised now. So how do we know that Operation Mockingbird still isn't in effect? Well, we don't. So the next time you sit down to read the Sunday paper or visit an online forum, just remember, don't believe everything you read. We are anonymous. We are legion. We do not forgive. We do not forget. Expect us.